Uh, we're here with uh, the two new Americans on the Lotto Jumbo World Tour team here, Tour of California, Nielsen Palace, Seb Kuz. How's it going? It's you guys happy great. to be in Long Beach? Yeah, stoked to be in California, yeah. SoCal. Start a Tour of California, it's nice to be back, racing on home roads again, so super amped to be here, yeah. So you guys have both done this race before, right? Yeah. You yeah. guys have some good fond memories of this? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Last yeah. year was my first year. Um, yeah, the fans are, are really amazing and uh, yeah, there's awesome, awesome routes and yeah, super excited for another edition. So you guys are both new to the World Tour squad. You guys kind of came up from last year. How's it been transitioning from Continental to World Tour? Yeah, it's been, I mean, it's been a pretty smooth transition, yeah. I think. The team has done a super good job about taking care of us and preparing us for races and allowing us the opportunity to race in World Tour races. And um, yeah, I mean, Sep got to race Strad Bianchi this year and I got to race in Milan San Remo. And um, I mean, those were two huge opportunities that definitely super thankful of the team of letting us do something like that. It's, it's, a, it's a huge, huge honor. And um, yeah, also them just giving us the chance to come back and race in America is, uh, is always a treat. So yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been super happy with it. It's been pretty smooth. and. Um, at the end of the day, you just gotta just gotta remember that the first year is definitely gonna be the hardest, and uh, each year just get a little bit better. Just gotta trust the process, and uh, yeah, look what, to the future. Seth, what's what stood out to you this year so far? Like moving up, going to Europe full time, racing with the big boys, as far as like changing. Like what, what's kind of stood out to you in your mind? Yeah, I think just like the uh, the depth of the races overall. Um, you know, here in the U.S., you you definitely have a lot of really talented guys, but it's it's definitely more top heavy. So over there, it's it's just a big adjustment getting used to racing with um, everybody that's at a at a super high level. Um, like yeah, fast country, for example. That you know you you can't you can't get by in that race without being at, at least at a really high level. So um, yeah, just just the overall level of the race. And, yeah. So obviously, like you know, racing in Europe, bike handling is like key over there. Positioning. You guys both have mountain bike backgrounds. Do you think that's really kind of helped out you guys, like moving over to Europe and racing in the big leagues? Probably helps in Strad quite a bit, but <laughs> yeah, on the gravel. But yeah, um, I mean, I would say that it's like it's such a it's a different type of animal. I think. I mm -hmm. mean, mountain biking may help with just like feeling comfortable on the bike or something, but just the way you move move in the group and um, the way you have to kind of feel the roads and. Um, yeah. know the courses it's it's definitely completely different than mountain biking I mean mountain biking is very like it's very technical and your bike handling skills individually have to be really good but uh, in road it's, it's also being aware of all the riders around you and what they're gonna be doing and um, just kind of watching the trends in the group on how the group is kind of moving and um, I mean it's always like a washing machine effect in the peloton you just gotta feel that out and um, ride the waves for when uh, you know you need to be at the front so yeah it's definitely scarier positioning on the on an inter-road <laughs> race and mountain bike race you're never that that scared but yeah certain certain times in a road race you think oh man i wish i had bigger balls for this uh, this section <laughs> <laughs> so as far as like a training perspective like you guys are obviously doing bigger races um longer days you know more consistent like that is have you guys had to up your training regimen to like adapt to this new level not too much i think i think we yeah race a lot more and, and the races are a lot harder so you, you can only do yeah you can only do so much training mm -hmm. so yeah it's definitely definitely just different than being in a on a U.S. team or racing on a U.S. Uh, kind of calendar where you're not having as many consecutive race days or as as hard of races so uh, yeah I think the training reflects that as well yeah I think the type of training also is a little bit different from what I've been used to in the past I mean you have so many what's well, like an example of it yeah like that type maybe a little different yeah I mean like double days on the bike or um, just a lot more specifics in terms of um, how you're like how the how you how you adapt to the training I guess um, and just the way that the just the resources that the team has at their disposal in terms of like a nutritionist and um, coupling that with the types of training you're doing and the types of training days and um, on how to get optimal recovery when you're doing a double day um, so you can simulate like a maybe a, a stage where there's a road stage in the morning a TT in the afternoon and um, just trying to simulate different racing situations and um, I mean because everybody's coached through the team then 
Uh, I think the team has a lot of a lot of knowledge and what it takes to perform on those types of days and try to just try to mimic that in training or just prepare for that in ways that I've uh, haven't been haven't done in the past but it's just because the racing is different you have to train a little differently so all right cool well best of luck this week boys we'll be following you guys along sweet thank you yeah thank you